The views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Go. And good morning everybody and welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another open show, the show that brings the Bronx and the world to you. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee. We have a fantastic show lined up for you today. Now coming up on today's show, we'll take a look at a Bronx Charter School, their programs and upcoming open house they're going to have. And plus, we'll check out a local organization aiming to bring a community together, empower youth, and create one village. There you go. After that, we'll sit down with a Bronx-born designer and see some of his latest styles and preview his upcoming show. Then we'll learn, we'll learn about a plant-based diet. You like plant-based diets? There you go. Vegan? All right, we'll discover an event with speakers, vendors, and a whole lot more. And then my man Bobby C has the latest in the headlines in the world of sports. And later on, we'll get a taste of some French treats right here in the studio, right here in New York. So stay tuned. All this and more is headed your way. We're open. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS, and you're watching Open, the live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off, our first guests are from Cardinal McClowski Community Charter School, and they join us today to discuss their mission and upcoming open house. We welcome uh, the founding principal, Jennifer Fidelli, and director of operations, Edric Brown, we welcome you guys to the Thank show. You. Thank you yeah. so much for stopping by. Thank you for having us. And so tell us all about this charter school. I know you guys are doing great things over there. We hear about you. It's a really exciting we have our opportunity. Ear to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really exciting opportunity. Um, that area of the Bronx, um, Belmont, does not have the opportunity for charter schools for families. There's only one other elementary charter school in District 10. Mm -hmm. The South Bronx, as everybody knows, is doing a lot of great work in the charter school world. Yeah. But that area, not as much. So we have the opportunity to open a charter school for kindergartners and first graders. And the school will grow one grade every year. So this year it will be K and 1. Then the ah, children okay. will move up to K and 1, 2. So all the way through 8th grade. So this is you in its this second is, year? This is our, we are open in August. Huh. So we have not opened yet. So very yes. exciting. Oh, okay. um, this is our this is our grand opening. Um, we're going to open the last week of August, um, and our schedule is very close to the Department of Education. We just go a week longer and on either end. We start a week yeah. early and we go a week late. And uh, the school day is a little bit longer till four o'clock. Yeah. Now, what's the difference between a public school and a charter school? Are the classroom sizes smaller? Uh, well, we have the women. parents more involved. The we women. want the parents in the community to be very involved. So we're looking to reach out to community members, different persons that are, have different activities they can offer to our children so they can have a very robust educational opportunity. Mm -hmm. We have a classroom size that's about eight to one. There'll be three teachers, two teachers that are certified or working towards the certification, yeah. Yeah. and one assistant, so 25 or so How does that students. help when you have a smaller classroom size? That's the best thing we yeah. could possibly do. So when the, everybody gets a little bit more attention, we can break more up into, into groups. Yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So the kids that are really moving fast and are ahead of the curve, then that's great. We can work with them. And the kids that need a little catching up or a little help with some of that basic phonics learning to read, then they can get the individualized Assistant. attention too. So nobody gets held up and nobody gets left behind. So you guys are here from its inception. Yes. Well, how did the plans come about? I was first approached about this about a year ago, and they told me what they were looking to do. Cardinal McCluskey was writing the application for SUNYs, um, and the more and more we talked about it, I was like, oh, I want to help, I want to help, and volunteer, and then all of a sudden it came around and I couldn't resist. So, um, so I 
brought Edric on board. Um, yeah. And it's just Parochial a... Parochial charter school? More... No, public char free public? public charter school. Yeah. It will be um, housed inside of a girls' Catholic high school gotcha. okay. um, on Belmont and 182nd. Uh, and there are just not a lot of opportunities in that area. Yeah. So we're going to be able to give them a, give parents some options. Excited? Very. Absolutely. Excited to make a difference with these children. We spent a lot of time working with children when they went off the rails in their lives. Yeah. So we have to start with children that are small mm -hmm. to help direct them in the right path. Yeah, I like what it says here. Um, you deal, this is a charter school to address the academic, social, emotional, and developmental needs of, of its students in a safe, supportive, trauma-sensitive learning environment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. We're going to be using the sanctuary model, and basically it just gives everybody an, a more equal playing field. So creating environments where it's easier mm -hmm. for children to learn because it's really just stressful being a kid. So they have a lot to worry about, and this is going to hopefully be an environment where um, they'll feel comfortable and they'll have the opportunity to learn at their own rate. What do you want parents to know? We want them involved. We want them to be a part of the school. We want them to know this will be a safe place that they should feel comfortable to come as well. They need to understand that this is not a drop-off zone. They need to come and work with us so we can work together with their children for their future. Mm. And we're there for them to do that as well as parents that may not have children that are appropriate for our school's age. We have open house on the 27th, please come by. We have information, we'll share it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of information that sometimes doesn't get passed around in the community. Yeah. We want to be a conduit for that. You say come by on the 27th? Yes, of okay. this week we have an open house at 6 p.m. 6 p.m.? Yes, 685 East 182nd Street. And we're going to come there, and what do we expect? Well, you're going to see you both of us standing there. You see us there. Um, oh, we're, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give parents an orientation of the yeah. school. It's a beautiful building. Um, and let them see the classrooms. Let them see what we're planning, have a conversation with them about the phonics-based program that we're going to be using, which is really old-fashioned. That whole language has been popular for a long time. And it works great for the kids who it works great for, but it doesn't help everybody. Mm -hmm. So the same way we're trying to create the culture, we're creating the language so that everybody has a chance. So we're looking for students between the ages of what and what right about now? That'll be and entering we'll kindergarten in one, so five and six, maybe five four, six. about five and six generally. Yeah, yeah. Um, so parents get ready. Oh, There's we're a coming. New school on the horizon. Oh, yeah, we're here. We're here. <laughs> we're here. And we're accepting yeah. applications right now. Okay. H how do we get involved? How do we do this? Go straight to the website, cmccs.org. C-M-C-C-S dot Let me write that down here. C-M-C-C-S dot O-R-G. And the first thing you'll see is apply here. Apply here. Yes. Absolutely. There's a phone number. If anybody needs button. help, they can call us. We'll walk them through it on the phone, or they can come to the open house and apply there. Absolutely. Or just come get more information. Mm -hmm. And all the right. phone rings directly to my cell phone, so I pick up all the calls. So, yeah, if they miss the, it, it's yes. forwarded to your cell phone. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Just call so. me and I'll walk you through every step necessary to get your child on the path to greatness. Yeah. So, people who want to take their child out of public school and get them into a, a charter school yes. such as yours, they should do what? They, come talk to us. Come talk That'll to us. That'll be the first step yes. is come talk to us. It's a smaller environment. A lot of the public schools are quite large, and mm -hmm. this is going to be a school that's starting with only 150 children. 75 in first grade, 75 in kindergarten. Right. And that's it. And it's a lottery process, so we cannot dictate who comes in or not. So it's a fair process. It was a lottery. Our lottery is on April 10th. And please, you know, apply now, and then hopefully your child will be selected. And we'll work together right. with you to make sure your child's a great education. All right. There you go. Edric Brown, Director of Operations, Cardinal McClowski Community Center. Jennifer Fidelli. Founding principal, Cardinal McClowski Community Center. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. us. Everything's Thank new. It's a beautiful thing. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Right. It's spring, springtime now, and you're talking about it. Absolutely. It's great. Yes. Thank you very much Thank for having us. Thank you for, Thank you for us. stopping by. But we got to take a quick break, but I promise we'll come back with more on that.
Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise, Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. And welcome, 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 welcome back. It's real comfortable on the set right here. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS. And guess what? Our next guests are the co-founders of One Village, One Voice. One Village, One Voice, an organization working to develop youth organizations in the Bronx. And we welcome Kevin Finley and Siobhan Johnson to the show for a look at their work and upcoming events. Uh, they're going to be doing them, so we doing it. get ready. <laughs> Tie up your sneakers <laughs> and get ready to go. It's your shorts. Let's, let's bring the energy. Yeah. So tell us, how, how did you start this and what's it all about? You want me to start? Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, All right. <laughs> I'm well, with you, though. We was working under a church basketball yeah. uh, team, and they we don't feel that they were giving the kids the right direction. Yeah. yeah. So the church was more involved with um, collecting money. So Financially, it was just... So they're looking for a couple of people like you guys that knew that area mm. of Actually, expertise. no, we just... They eventually left the kids kind of stranded, and we just took it and over. And we just shooting around. And we just took them up, and we started with about seven kids, and to this day we got 70 kids. Oh, Every man. Saturday. Every so Saturday. In a month, we probably run about 300 kids. So kids that were just shooting around, scrambling, just shooting have around. direction now. And now they have direction because we turned it more from just a basketball team or basketball clinic to a mentoring service for the youth. Gotcha. And we also add chess. We also add a couple of physical fitness. We have some workshops coming up, uh, financial yeah. literacy, job readiness, uh, wellness program, yoga yeah. and mindfulness programs. We want to branch out and really help the community and build within. There's too much we're worried about outside help when we should be looking in and really building our community yeah. and adding programs that we feel that our kids, our youth really need to grow mm -hmm. and be really good young adults. Yeah, so instead of having just a basketball thing, right. you know, you added the ball around. Let's do the mind, body, and spirit thing. Yeah. And the worst thing I hate to hear is we're waiting for the next president to decide where our life is going. I think that the community needs to take a stand and say, hey, we're going to change this ourselves. I don't ourselves. even like that word, wait. Nah, like, ah, I, I don't wait. We, we don't we, wait. We, we, we've <laughs> been, I think we've been having too much conversations about what we need to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, when we started this, we didn't. We we was doing the basketball, and morally, we just say, you know what? We can. We it's not about money. It's about our kids. It's mm -hmm. about the community. We see the need that they 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 want to just be great. They want to play ball. They want to have fun. And I think that starts from there. You know, for them to do something that they love, mm -hmm. it focused them. You know, they're not out here running the streets. You know yeah. how many kids come to me and say, thank you, coach, for doing this because now I don't. They have opportunity to do something else. They have opportunity to be somewhere yeah. and. Mm -hmm. People come together. They kids that didn't even know each other has come together. Fights has you know stopped between you know rival blocks because they come to the gym and now you know they're friends. They playing ball together. All the energy is exerted right there. In the exactly. Gym. And we also want to teach them that um, even going forward, we don't just want to give them something where mm -hmm. they say, "All right, I'm um, I'm in school or I'm learning this," but we want to teach them to give back. Yeah. To also give back to their community. But you do stress the importance of getting a good education. Yes, because, we know, do. Of course. Something to yes. fall back on. You know, yes. I'll give you two feet, put Definitely. one foot in front of the other. But, you know, if the physical thing doesn't happen, you got the other I, leg back there to go back on. Right. You know? I think too much, um, we don't, we keep it 100% real with them. You know, if you want to. Everybody's go to, not going to make it to the NBA. If you want right. to make it to the NBA, 
you you can do that, but you have to be dedicated. You have to be obsessed. You have to be addicted to that sport, and you gotta yeah. live it day in and day out. And you have to go way beyond yourself. So I tell them that's the avenue, but you gotta it's, make sure exactly. get your mind. The IQ yeah. is way better than your physical because your physical would die down, but your mind was you know live on forever. Yeah. 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 And people say you know you may break a leg or something like that or or break an arm, right. and you know, it may take you out of the game. Right. But you may change course. You may mm -hmm. say, hey, maybe I want to do this, but you have to have your mind right. Yeah. So you have to have your education. Also know that you have to have your education to even play these sports or yeah. get far in them. So. You got to be smart. Right. You got to be smart. Basketball right. is an IQ game. So what do you tell uh, students who want to get involved in your, your game and to be coached by you guys? Uh, wh what do they have to do to qualify? Is there education involved? They have to good hold, grades. Good, good, you good have grade. to hold good grades, and you have to be dedicated and all around the full circle, not just saying, okay, I want to play basketball and yeah. this is what I want to do. No, you have to have your mind right. You have to. And these are the shirts you guys are making? These are some yeah. of the shirts. Right, it's for the tournament Next April 6th. Next come up, you bring, bring one for us. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh, oh. We're ahead of you. We're ahead of you, man. <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> um, thank you. It takes, a, it takes a village. Thank you for being part of our village. Thank oh, you for having us on. I, I will wear this with a lot of respect and love. And if you turn yeah. it around, you'll see it takes a village to raise a child. And we embody it takes, it takes a, village. a village. We And we want to make sure that not only the kids know, but the parents know yeah. that you're not alone in this. It, it takes multiple people. It takes the teachers, the parents, uh -oh. the coaches, and you, all of us you, you, to, uh -oh. to grow together <laughs> and make sure the kids are directed in the right direction. Right. I'm in line with you. Right. Definitely. Make the grade. Yes. You got the parent, teacher, student, community, clergy, yes. financial literacy. Mm -hmm. You got to be taught that. And health. Yes. Health, definitely. Health. health. Definitely. Definitely. Because our workouts is intense. Ooh, and, you do? And it, it scares kids. We, yeah, it is. We <laughs> also encourage them to eat right. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we, we don't tell you to stop eating meat, but we try to encourage you to stop eating these things that do our body the harm. Process stuff. Yes. So exercise your mind, body, and spirit so, in yes. preparation for life. He tried the church to, is still involved, right? Yeah. yeah. He tried to get me vegan, and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> well, Vegan is good. Right. It's great. I, it's I tell great. you, a lot of people go vegan, but then some of them are malnutritious. Right. Malnutritious. Mal, they're suffering from malnutrition because they're not eating the right thing. Vegan is good, but there'll be some things that you have to replace. Right. Yeah. To be an unhealthy vegan yeah, also. Yeah. So but I started eating right because of him. <laughs> he come in with the, the health <laughs> foods. And That's good. Where do we go with more information? OneVillageOneVoice.org. OneVillageOneVoice.org. One one and 4-6. Uh, April have 6th, a, you got the April big thing. We have a fundraiser tournament, three on three. Uh, uh, really bring back the essence of basketball. Get your the three breast uh, players and, uh, and let's still, go at it. We still have openings for a couple of more uh, teams, if anyone is interested. Or uh, I got a team. I'm bringing them down. Okay. Bring them down. Bring them down. And, and if you win, win what? If you win, we'll, we'll we play got for a pair beautiful of trophies. <laughs> 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 we got beautiful trophies and entertainment. And if anybody is well. interested in, you know, volunteering with us, they can contact us at info at one voice, one voice .org. Okay. We, We're trying to open up the community. So if somebody has an idea for a program, come talk to us. Let's make it happen. Right. Thank you guys so much. Good Thank brothers. You. Thank you we for your service. You. Coach! Thank you, man. Coaches are in the house. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Uh, Kevin Finley, co-founder, One Village, One Voice Incorporated, Siobhan Johnson, same thing, co-voice, <laughs> co-founder, co-voice too, yeah, co -voice. big news there. Yeah. One Village, One Voice Incorporated. We're going to take a quick break, but stay tuned. I promise we'll be right back with more next. Hi, I'm David Lesh, legal correspondent to the morning show Open. If you have a legal question that you'd like me to answer, please send me an email at davidlesh at bronxet.org and I will address it on our Ask Your Lawyer segment. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold, the angry giant! It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Bye-bye. Hi. 
Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Why don't you ever see elephants hiding in trees? Because they're really good at it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. And welcome back. Our next guest is a, a Bronx-born and raised a fashion designer. And he's here on the set with us today. He joins us for a look at his, his work and his upcoming fashion show. We welcome D. Don Wilson of Original Don Clothing. The Don is in the house. There we right, go. Thank you. All right. So um, you've been doing this for some time, right? Yeah, I've been uh, designing clothes, i say, for about 10 years now. Yeah. And... Um, as I was uh, making clothes, I, you know, I felt that uh, in order to be, you know, a great designer, you have to sit back and really learn your craft. So, yeah. you know, I relaxed for a little while and just, you know, learn things more. Who, who did you, uh, did you study after somebody? Who did you learn from? Uh, honestly, I really who taught my... Who your favorite people? Oh, uh, well, honestly, my, one of my favorite people is Dapper Dan. I respect this craft for more than years of him uh, designing clothes for Don people. and Dapper Dan. Oh, I <laughs> <ain't>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really, I really love the work that he's did through the years. Um, so that's uh, that's one person. Another person is uh, Groovy Lou. Uh, he's uh, he's under Bad Boy with Puff Daddy. He's like one of my mentors. Yeah, yeah. He's somebody that told me um, when you're trying to make something great, um, learn your craft and. Uh, you know, and relax, take your time. Take your time and do it right. Yeah. That's what grandma used to say, take your time. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> so what do we have here? This young uh, man, is, he goes by the name of? This is uh, Joseph Wilson. This is my brother. Up, this Joe? is my first choice for my model. Uh -huh. uh, right now, you see, this is uh, athlete, my original Dawn clothing athletic wear. All right. 100% uh, cotton. Um, it's not too heavy, but it's something that you could wear in between 60 degrees, 75 degree weather. Yeah. And, you know, he, he looks cool. He's yeah. real fashionable right now. Yeah, it comes in different colors. Yeah, it comes in different color. Um, red, uh, black, olive green, navy blue, white. And I have a few more colors coming. I just want to surprise a few people. In there everything. you go. Yeah. All right. So, are you? Do you have any fashion shows coming up where you can put this on display? Or? Yes, I do. I have a fashion show coming up August third, downtown Manhattan. Um, a lot of um, up tempo, high class urban wear is coming down the runway. Mm. I'm using a lot, using a lot of jean, a lot of uh, skins when it comes down to snake skin, alligator. Um, uh -oh. it's, uh, yeah, it's 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 taking gonna be back. really going yeah, back to Delancey it. Street. Yeah, yo. yeah, yeah. I'm trying to bring <laughs> you don't know that. nothing about I'm Delancey trying to bring Street. that you, do. you know that old school, but <laughs> old school, new school style. Back. With the alpacas and the matadors, the snakeskins, ostrich, and ostrich. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let me look back in my closet. See, go way back in here and see if I can pull some of that out. You, can, you can modify it too. Oh, I can modify. Yeah, I can adjust. <laughs> it, it, if you got something that you have in the closet that's old school, I can restore it. Let's see if I can find an old pair of matadors. Oh, okay. <laughs> so wait a minute now. Um, you have not only sweatsuits, you have different yeah, things. Yeah, I have um, uh, jeans, jean jackets, uh, varsity jackets, uh, T-shirts, tank tops, hats, um, sweatbands. Those are the Shorts, yeah. Yeah, I have uh, a full line of um, basically every, anything mm -hmm. that you can wear. I'm working on underwear because, you know, uh, I mean, hey, if you can wear the sweatsuit, you know, uh, got original Dawn underwear coming also. So it's um, a full line of everything, Stock, socks. Yeah, yeah. Put Dawn in the back. The underwear? Yeah, yeah, so nah, no, no, not. Uh, I say going around the waist. Around the waist? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to put it in the back, too, just in case you want to pull your 
just a little bit so you can see Don. That, yeah, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> With some jeans, some you know, some baggy jeans. Well, so, today, no, you know, no? they don't they don't wear them too baggy. <laughs> they don't wear the baggy jeans today, but you they know, they wear I'm, skinny jeans. They wear the skinny jeans. It I'm goes back to, and forth though. Yeah, it's back and forth. I'm trying to, you know, you got to do it for the young kids. They wear the skinny jeans. Us um, older men, we wear the straight leg style. So I'm trying to keep it in between there and, you know, keep it fashionable. Yeah. yeah. My daughter put, bought me a pair of uh, skinny jeans for Christmas. I, they, they, you know, they were tight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe couldn't you. get them where I needed to go. You know, I yeah. wanted to put them. <laughs> and they just hung right there for they a little right while. right <laughs> there for a while. Oh, boy. That's a style warm when we went out of town. Yeah, it's the style today. And, you know, with the skinny jeans and the straight leg look, uh, you can either wear shoes or you can, you know, wear sneakers with them. It's, yeah. it's, you know, a crossover style. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. Steve Harvey has a line. He works with us at the radio station. He has a line of suits and things like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Are you doing suits also? Um, not at this moment, but um, next year I will be doing dress shirts. Oh, good idea. Yeah, All yeah, right. yeah. It's, um, I'm trying to, you know, give that look. You know, when you say original Don, you... Um, uh -huh. You think it automatically. You should think of something classy, fashionable, high quality, and everything. Yeah. So I'm trying to bring that, you know, to the urban fashion world, and everything. Uh, keeping people um, in a clothing line that has that brings a positive outlook, because um, when you say original Don, or original, you know that you're number one yeah. in everything. Whether you're number one in your own life. And at the same time, when you say the word Don, you're somebody that takes care of yourself and the people that's surrounding you. Yeah. That's so good. that's what I'm trying to bring to the kids wearing the clothes. Is, that's good. That's besides, good. Uh, you're looking good in it, but the the name represents something um, to take care of yourself mm -hmm. and your family and the business that you uh, you represent. That's good. Is there a website where we can look at the uh, You can look it up at originaldonclothing.com. Go from side to side. Yeah, while yeah, he's yeah, doing that. Yeah, move around. Let him okay, see. Okay. Let him see. <laughs> move from side to side, bro. There you go. <laughs> and, yeah, but, but you can look the clothing up, clothing line up at originaldonclothing.com. Uh -huh. uh, you can look me up on Instagram under official underscore OD underscore clothing. Uh -huh. um, also, um, I'd like to announce... I just signed paperwork to wear, I don't want to say the, the store yet, but my clothing line will be yeah. in a store yeah. very, very soon to where people can go find it. And I'd love to come back on your show again yeah. to talk well, where's about Where's the fashion that. show? You're always welcome. Um, the fashion show is on West 24th Street, Manhattan. Uh. I'm trying to keep it a little disclosed, but um, you can go on Eventbrite in order to uh, order the tickets for the fashion show. And you also could go on Original Dawn Clothing and uh, order your tickets for the show. And you have all your show. models and everything already. Yeah, I have my models. Uh, I, it, it, shoot, I can I can use more because I'm trying to come down the runway. Where do the they runway. go if they want to get involved? Um, you can uh, contact um, Stacy Peterson. Also, um, you can go on uh, Instagram. Go on uh, official underscore OD underscore clothing. Is it on the website too? It's on the website right, too. So they can go right to the website. Yeah, they can go right which to the is, website, which is originaldonclothing.com. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Yes, yes. D. Don Wilson, Original Don Clothing. Thank you, my brother. Yo, go like this, man. <laughs> 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 All right, we got to take a quick break. We'll be back with more next. <laughs> I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. 
a whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family, the first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney and I'm your dividend. And welcome back. You know, on April the 13th, Black Veg Fest is going to, well, we'll it's going to take place in Co-op City. Uh, is it Section 5, Section 3, Section? We'll let you know what section it's going to be in, but it's in Co-op City. And joining us with all the details, we have founder, uh, I'm a Wally, a day Wally, and we welcome you to the show. Thank That's you very right. much. I appreciate that. Black Veg Fest, uh, I'm a Wale, a day Wale. I'm a Wale, a day Wale. Yes, sir. I said that right. Yes, sir. Yeah, you yeah. got that right. The Veg Fest. Right. The Veg Fest, yeah. So Veg Fest is going to be in Co-op City. What section is that in? That's right. Uh, so we're going to be at C31. C31. Yes. Uh, gotcha. And it's going to be incredible. Uh, right. I'm not sure if uh, your viewers are familiar with uh, Black Veg Fest uh, in 2018, but in Brooklyn, we brought 2,000 people out on the rainiest day. Cool. Uh, of 2018. Borough uh -huh. president was there, Brooklyn Borough president Eric Adams, Eric Adams was there, yeah, yeah. who's also vegan, and uh, he helped make that event. He uh, looks good. Great. He lost a lot of weight and everything. He's yes. been in your food. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, veganism is the way. Um, over 25 years, I haven't been eating you know, any meat, yeah. and uh, I've been able to, yeah, uh, to fight boxing, kickboxing, and, and MMA. And, uh, well, I'm done now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm writing books right there now. There you go. You're fighting another way. Trying to get the community. Yes, exactly. It's another fight. You know, exactly. Uh, our community right now is suffering from heart disease. Heart disease has been the reigning killer for 90 plus years in this country. Yeah. And we have diabetes that's attacking our community. So these are the main killers. So if you think about it, when we talk about gun violence or any type of violence or accidents, or slips, slips and falls, anything, yeah. we should really be focusing on uh, heart disease, so number one. of the diseases. Yeah. Like Eric Cancer. Adams, he suffered from diabetes. Right, exactly. Yeah. And he was able to eradicate that. Yes. You know, so... This through just diet. Shows, right, through, through diet, diet. Just focusing on ourselves, you uh -huh. know, so we don't have to necessarily, you know, go to the doctor. We should go to the doctor to get a checkup, to get the diagnosis, know what's going on, and then, you know, start thinking about how do we actually change these, you know, um, a direction that our community is going to, mm -hmm. where we have fried chicken, you know, Chinese food, you know, every single day, chicken wings and oh, man. so on and so forth on a, on a consistent basis. And we understand that we're getting busier and busier as the economy, you know, is slow. But slows. that grease alone will but, kill you. Yeah, exactly. The oil. That's what happened. Yeah. So we can go vegan and we can still, you know, be a junk vegan and not be as healthy. So we can do better with more fruits, more vegetables. So yeah. if people just make that transition first, getting more fruits and more vegetables, then people start to think about it. Because I was vegetarian first and then, I, you know, I dropped, then I dropped uh, dairy and all of a sudden, bronchitis. People always ask me, what is the main thing that's changed and transformed me? Like, I had chronic bronchitis. Bronchitis and asthma and all that stuff. Without Gone. dairy. Just taking dairy out of my life. Yeah. Because I used to eat whole pizza. People tell me about, you know, like, whoa, this such and such meat. Like, they act like I never ate meat before. I didn't have five burgers. You know, I wasn't eating a whole pizza. You was going in. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. You know, I was a fighter at that time. But uh -huh. now... Uh, when I really think but about it. But you wore it, it off in that yeah, ring. exactly. But you could have burned better fuel when you were fighting. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I, I did go, veg I was vegetarian at that time, uh -huh. you know, uh, when I was, um, you know, competing and uh, became a boxing champion and kickboxing champion. And I'm basically, you know, continue to train and uh, author books uh, and, and really speak to veganism in such a way that, you know, explains to our community that, uh -huh. listen, 
when we talk about veganism, it's not a white thing because I first heard about, you know, veganism from Rastas. Yeah. You know, I, in our community was, you know, thinking I Rastafari, tile, right? They had everything. <laughs> exactly. You know, when I was in Jamaica, I went up into the mountains with this guy. He said, we got everything I need here. I don't right. have to go to a doctor. He grew everything that he did. Exactly. You know, um, our, our community, you know, where we are is our answer. Yeah. And so with this as well, there were so many communities last year when we did Black Veg Fest that were able to sell out all their products and was able to renovate and build yeah. brick and mortar uh, establishments in the community. These are black owned you know, businesses. So we're not just talking about just you know, plant-based or veganism, just getting healthy. Yeah, we're talking about that, but we're also talking about the environment. We're talking about black business. Right. We're talking about black love. There was so much love that were out in the streets. People came with umbrellas. They saved the day because we had to start late because of the rain, <laughs> you know? So, but, but, but right rain now, and shine when people want to yeah. do something about, yeah. you know, make a move, That's move right. it together in the same direction for a common cause yes. and, and be healthy. They'll come out in the rain. Exactly. They'll come exactly. out in a snowstorm. People will come out. People will think that, you know, black won't support, you know, each other. And we got to stop saying that because we showed the, the fruits of our labor that people yeah. really came out and they supported. And people can come out to party on a Monday night at a place called Red Parrot. Right. Back in the day. Long lines, <laughs> cold as heck, six degrees. People yeah. can come out to get healthy. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and that's really what it is. And so we come into the Bronx and right now, most of the tickets have, you know, sold out, and the tickets are free. Uh -huh. So I just wanted to let people know that the tickets are free in the Bronx, and Bronx is... Where's it going to be? Uh, it, this is going to be right in Co-op City. Uh, that's right, um, Co-op City. Right. C31. Right, C31. Make sure people get down there. Uh, it's going to be free. There's going to be uh, so many different uh, vegan establishments mm -hmm. that are going to be selling food. There's also uh, um, Body by Bernhardt. Um, he's an uh, Instagram, uh, you know, guru. Uh, and he's going to be doing some fitness routines for folks. We're going to have folks doing, uh, we're going to have yogis there as well. Oh, good, so good. we're going to do some yoga. Uh, we're get just going to get healthy. body and soul. You know, exactly. Right, there you go. And so we're working with the African-American um, uh, 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 group in Co-op City. Uh -huh. And what, you're, what we're doing is, you know, essentially, you know, bridging those lines because those are elders and, you know, we're, we're a little younger and we're bringing it together. Yeah. They've been doing it for 14 years. This is their 15th year. Yeah, keeping it tight. You know, so people, Black Veg Fest, April 13th, 2019, from 12 to 5 p.m., C31 Co-op City, Bartow Community Center, right there. Boom. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm a Wally a day, Wally. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. All right, we got to take a quick break right here, but uh, we'll be back with more. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason. Because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. We begin on the college basketball hardwood and continue our coverage of March Madness. The sensational John Morant is out of the tourney, but not before turning some more heads along the way. The Murray State star will wait to make an announcement on whether he plans to enter the NBA draft after his team was eliminated from the NCAA tournament Saturday. Morant is widely projected to be a top three pick in this year's draft should he choose to forego his final two years of college eligibility. Morant's triple-double sent Murray State past Marquette and displayed just how difficult he is to contain. Morant finished his season with a 28-point performance and 12-seeded Murray State's 90-62 loss to number 4 Florida State in the second round in Hartford, Connecticut. Morant averaged 24.4 points and 10.2 assists per game for the season, becoming the first college player to accomplish that feat since assists were officially recorded in the 83 8 season. During this tournament run, which included a triple-double against Marquette in the first round Thursday, Morant was responsible for 63% of Murray State's points, according to ESPN stats. I was right 
about the Iona men's basketball team, although I wish I wasn't. Nonetheless, it certainly looked like I might be wrong Friday night. The Gales gave top seeded North Carolina all it could handle. North Carolina completed a perfect first round for top seeds in this NCAA tournament, but not before Iona became the latest number 16 seed to show that these matchups are no sure thing. Cameron Johnson scored 21 points and North Carolina quickly erased a five point halftime deficit to hot shooting Iona going on to win 88 73. The Tar Heels 28 and 6 came into the tournament as a top seed for a record 17th time. Iona surprised the Tar Heels early with their energy and outside shooting. Spring Valley native Ricky McGill made all four of his three point attempts in the opening half as the Gales 17 and 16 on the season led by as many as eight and took a 33 excuse me a 38 33 lead into halftime. Right about Iona sadly wrong about the Fordham women sadly. But both underdogs played well and pushed higher seeds in the NCAA tournament. The Fordham women led after the first quarter in Syracuse Saturday afternoon. Q's used two key spurts, one at the front end of the second quarter and the other at the front end of the fourth to seal the double digit win. The Rams completed one of their best seasons in history. Regardless, congrats to them. We go inside the locker room for more. We were executing well on, on, on offense and defense um, and paying attention to what coach was saying, uh, which enabled us to be in that position. Um, but yeah, I don't think any of us really thought like um, the game was over or anything. Uh, we just, yeah, we were, we were happy with how we were playing um, and knew that we could hang around um, and we could keep playing like this. I think turnovers killed us a little bit. Um, you know, we turned the ball, not only did we turn the ball over, but the, uh, Syracuse executed on offense and, you know, scored whether it was a three or a two. So they capitalized off our uh, turnovers, and I think that was the issue. We'll have a full recap right here on Broxton in our next episode of The Ram with Coach Gately. No upset magic there, but UCF almost took care of the Duke men on Sunday. Duke's freshman tandem of Zion Williamson and R.J. Barrett saved the top-ranked Blue Devils from a second-round upset at the hands of UCF. Williamson's contested lay-in with 14 seconds remaining cut the UCF lead to one. Then Barrett handled the rest, rebounding Williamson's missed free throw and putting it back to give the Blue Devils the go-ahead basket to beat the number nine Knights. 77-76. Close one. Time for some quick hitters from around the world of sports. Rob Gronkowski is hanging up his cleats on Sunday. The Patriots tight end announced that he's retiring from the game of football. Gronk made the announcement via his Instagram account in a long post thanking the Patriots and his fans. The legend of Rob Gronkowski grew by leaps and bounds over the course of his nine NFL seasons from his utter dominance and record-setting performances on the gridiron to his fun-loving persona off it. The NFL will never be the same because of the man that they call Gronk. The Patriots All-Pro future Hall of Fame tight end announced his retirement from the game of football. The 29-year-old exits the NFL having won three Super Bowl championships with the Patriots while redefining the tight end position in my book. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. Only issue could be the length of his career. Only two other Hall of Famers did not play their age 30 season. Jim Brown and Gail Sayers. It would be pretty good company for Gronk. In motor racing, Brad Kaslowski gave Team Penske and the new Ford Mustang its third cup victory through the first six races of the season by routing the field at Martinsville Speedway. Kaslowski led 446 of the 500 laps around the shortest track on the NASCAR schedule and was only challenged a handful of times by Chase Elliott, the only driver to pass him on the track on Sunday. Meanwhile, in IndyCar, we have the youngest race winner headlining the action at the Circuit of the Americas in a race that saw dominant driver and pole sitter Will Power retire with a few handful of laps to go. Rookie Colton Herta won his first career IndyCar Series race in the series' first trip to the Circuit of Americas on Sunday in Texas. The victory makes Herter, who turns 19 later this month, IndyCar's youngest winner. Herter, racer Brian Herter's son, is the only 18-year-old with a victory since IndyCar's previous youngest winner was 19-year-old Graham Brayhall in 2008. Herter, who led the field on the final restart, restart excuse me, of the IndyCar Classic, didn't give it up 
won in his third career race. That's amazing. His only two previous IndyCar starts were a race in 2018 and the series season opener in St. Petersburg, Florida earlier this month. To the NBA, the Brooklyn Nets are in Portland tonight. That game gets underway at 10 p.m. on the East Coast. The New York Knicks fell 124-113 to the L.A. Clippers yesterday at the Garden. And on the ice, the New York Islanders topped Arizona 2-0 Sunday. The Rangers will host Pittsburgh tonight at 7, while the New Jersey Devils will welcome Buffalo to the Rock for a 7 p.m. puck drop. On the baseball diamond, only a few days away from opening day right here in the Bronx. The Yankees get rolling Thursday afternoon. Not that it matters, but they had the best record in spring training. Fans, I'm sure, will be happy to see the spring action go, replaced by games that actually mean something. Hopefully, the trend can remain the same with the Bronx Bombers. Best record in baseball sounds pretty good. Those are the headlines. We hit the C-list to go under the microscope and talk a little John ja Morant. I've already made a case for Zion Williamson with the first pick in this space. Williamson is the Duke pre-professional approaching levels of basketball popularity known only by LeBron James and Steph Curry. But John ja Morant deserves a C-list too, and he might even deserve to be the number one pick, even if I couldn't do that if I was an NBA GM tasked with choosing between him and Zion Williamson. Morant, the mesmerizing Murray State guard whose remarkable sophomore season ended Saturday with a blowout loss to Florida State, has emerged as the sport's Next great point guard, the two South Carolinans, could be the first two picks of the NBA draft in June. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's how it will shake out regardless of who gets the number one pick. This will be a big debate between now and June. I would love to hear from the fans at home. Hit me up at The Voice Bobby C on social media and share your thoughts. Who should go number one at your sports? I'm Bobby C. Sometimes things just happen, devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Welcome, 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 welcome back, everybody. Our, our next guests are the co-owners of Le Macron French Pastries. Did I say it right? Yes, sir. There you go. And you join us with a, a taste of their desserts. You're going to love it. I'm going to smoke one in a little while. Uh, we welcome Sandra and Kelly. <laughs> Sandra and Frank Kelly to the show. We welcome you guys. Hi, Thank how you so are much. you? Now, I've had macarons before. But you said the American macaron, right? Yeah, you've had the American with the <laughs> coconut and the chocolate. These are yeah. a little bit different. Yeah. These are actually one of the hottest French pastries to make. Yeah. And there uh, are some people who are addicted to this right about now. Yes, yes. They are. <laughs> they are. Some in your staff. Some yeah. in your staff. And, and this is great. And how did you guys start in this business? Well, uh, we met. She's from the Bronx. I'm from Brooklyn. All, All right. Native, yeah. We're putting the Bronx together in Shout one room. Shout out to the Bronx. Right. <laughs> and I'm from Queens. <laughs> and then we got together, and uh, we were looking around for a franchise. Uh -huh. And we happened to run into this and try it, and that's the history. Real simple franchise. Uh -huh. It's a real simple uh, 
small business, small family run business. It's, it's and, and these are the products, some of the products that you provide. These are just some of the products that we provide. Yeah. We have a lot. Um, the macaroons have become really popular in the past few years. Mm -hmm. I have eight year old little girls that correct my pronunciation of <laughs> the word macaroon all the time. And they hit you in the throat every time. Yeah, all the time, all the time. <laughs> it's yeah. good. The franchise owner gives me a little karate chop uh -huh. at the O. <laughs> but it's good. So this is an award-winning franchise. Talk yeah, about this franchise is about eight years old. Um, there's a couple of big-name macaron places throughout mm -hmm. Europe and stuff. Uh, we've beaten them for the past seven years in a row. Uh, we didn't do eight because we opened two weeks after the first <laughs> competition. <laughs> And you guys are located we're in right West in the Chester's other side Ridge of the Bronx, yeah. Yonkers, right? Yeah, yeah. we're in Yonkers, we're, well, the Ridge Hill Mall, which is 95% of the Bronx shops there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it really is a, a good spot. Um, it's fun. We, we do a lot of parties with the kids. It's fun. Yes, Kelly, we have. everybody um, comes to you guys. Yes. Yeah. Um, our store is beautiful. It's very comfy. Uh, we have our store is more a home environment. We have families that come constantly over we have young children we have some celebrities that have come visit us as well uh, we won't say names uh we also do tea parties our tea parties are for adults oh, okay. and for young children so people can call you up and say hey you know we want a theme party like a yes. tea party or yeah. something like that yeah. yeah we started to thinking it was going to be younger kids i have a lot more older kids that book it but celebrities, it's fun it's yeah. fun it's definitely fun. Uh -huh. It's fun. Our chocolate. We have a few of our chocolates here. We have our cigars. We have our lipsticks. They are yeah. all edible. Sure, yes, please. you may. They're all edible. We have a pipe as well. That's we have a, a good pipe way for a birth announcement. As well. It's all chocolate. This is a pipe that you oh, could have okay. as well. Um, our chocolatier is amazing. He uses the best products as well as our Can macaron. Can you join me in a cigar? Please. You, this is our lipstick. lipstick. It's yeah. all edible. Uh -huh. um, many people think it's a real lipstick until we say you're able to eat it entirely. Yeah. It's filled with a center and an orange jam. It's all dark chocolate, and it's delicious. What is the best part of it? Uh oh, wait. You better hold on to oh, that one. We, okay. We're going to taste it in a little while. But the, tell me about the Harvest Fest, May 9th. Harvest Fest, we have up, uh, the Taste of Ritual we have up on May 9th. Um, we have it. People pay, I think it's 25 or $30 for a ticket, and they actually get to go there and try samples from all the restaurants mm -hmm. that are up there. And then uh, local vendors come in, some food carts and stuff like that. It's a really, really good day. Where, where's it going to be again? Uh, it's May 9th. It's at West Chester's Ridge Hill Mall. Oh. Okay. Uh, you can find information on ridgehill.com's website. Oh, that's going to be packed. A lot of yes, people go to that. We yeah, we get a few thousand people, people go to that. It's, it'll, and it's, again, yeah, 95% yeah. is from the Bronx. So it's are. early, no line, no wait. Yes. No, we, 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 you know, we love our Bronx people. We also get people from Manhattan, but more so for in the Bronx. Um, they're faithful to our product. Mm -hmm. We also have page, pastries. If you look down here, we have a Claire's. There is one of um, France's best pastry, and we have brought it over to the Bronx. We want to bring, if we can make it to Paris, let's bring it to, the, to Westchester and have our families from the Bronx come over yeah. and have yeah. an experience. I see you got the chocolate eclairs and well you got different flavors. Yes. These are French the eclairs. eclairs. They're a little bit thinner and a, little a thinner. lot lighter than American eclairs. Yeah. yeah and you good. got the Eiffel Towers over here. Mm -hmm. oh, but what are those? What am I looking at? Oh that is a macaron tower. Macaron towers they come from that size, like four levels, that hold yeah. about 30 macaroons, mm -hmm. up to I have a six-foot tower that holds 3,000. Oh, wow. And yeah, people are starting yeah. to buy them versus wedding cakes now. Yeah, you can uh, do yes. that. Weddings, birthdays. We can, uh, graduations. Graduations. Yeah. Baby showers. We're having a lot of requests for baby showers now. Um, oh, this is great. For yeah. weddings. So you come over. We You have a taste test. We show uh, you color schemes. Do you have a color scheme? So we'll try to... Pretty much make your that's uh, white chocolate, red, white, dream come true. The, yeah. Those are yeah. all chocolates there. You ever eat a, 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 a Eiffel Tower? <laughs> yes, you may. They, there's <laughs> white chocolate, dark yeah, chocolate, <laughs> um, raspberry, uh, banana, hazelnut, dark chocolate. A little bit for everyone. Mm, all right. There you go. So come over to our store. This is just a few of our products. We have so much more. Plus, we have amazing coffee. We have gelato, we have cappuccino, and gelato. espresso. Hey, we got ice cream too. Yes, we have, we have gelato, gelato, which we import from, Fran from yeah. France. Uh -huh. A lot of people argue who's better, Italian or French. They're both the same. Both the same. They're really good. Same <laughs> stuff. Yeah.
And we're also incorporating a new dessert. It's called a bubble waffle. Uh -huh. It's made, um, we make it fresh. The batter, we, as you wait, we'll incorporate, um, if you want fruit, we'll incorporate fruit on the waffle. If you want gelato with it, it's a great dessert. Something new, it's actually booming uh -huh. um, in many areas, and we brought it to our store as well. Do you have products for those uh, with dietary issues like well, lactose intolerance? Our macaroons, because we're one of the very few companies that don't use preservatives or anything artificial, so they are gluten free. Uh, there's no preservatives, no artificial flavors, or anything like that. Um, chocolate, some people say it's healthy, so we're healthy there. Yeah. Um, when you get down to the bottom with the pastries, that's a little different. I think everybody <laughs> in the studio wants to taste this. Yes, yeah, they're yes. pretty. Yes, we bought it's, some it's enough for crew, everyone. <laughs> the, the vegan crew wants to taste it also. A yes, little egg white in the macaroons. <laughs> a little bit, though. Just a little bit. Not much, just a, just a little. <laughs> yeah, everything in moderation. A little balance. <laughs> yeah, so you can go. The macaroons it. are only 80 calories, so you're fine. Uh -huh. you, you have a dessert, walk around the mall, burn it off. Yes. Any tips uh, for people who want to start a franchise? Yeah, I, I tell you, when we looked for this franchise, what we liked about it is it's a small family-run operation. They're, they're a corporation, but they're not corporate mm -hmm. as of yet. You know, they're growing rapidly. Yeah. Um, but to get a hold of the owners of a franchise is very important, to be able to contact someone that's yeah. willing to invest time with you and teach you how to run the business and is more proud of the product yeah. than you are. Usually you seek out some, you know, a franchise that you want to get involved in, but they came to you guys. They came to us. Um, we hit it off yes. day one with them, which was uh, really good. We got very lucky. We got very lucky. But they taught us a lot. And they taught us that, you know, while you might be attracted to a larger franchise <laughs> to try to get more uh, money, this is, I have so much fun, the money is secondary yeah. to this. All right. The so you got the big Harvest Fest coming up May mm -hmm. 9th and, uh, uh, it's going to be at that location that you mentioned before in the mall. Yes. Which yes. is? Westchester Ridge Hill is an outdoor mall. Uh, we have a big garden area. This will be in the, in that area. Yeah. And you also have a website where people can go on and see yes. a lot of this. LaMacaroon.nyc. Mm -hmm. All right. Give them a big round of applause, everybody. Frank Kelly, the owner of La Macaron French Pastry, and Sandra Kelly, the owner, also. Um, I've, you know, I've smoked a cigar from time to time, but I've never <laughs> eaten one. Let's see how we did. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> We're eating cigars. It's eating. Eat your lipstick. <laughs> now, if you do that out in public, you eat your lipstick. You're going to say, hey, what's going on here? The young ladies love it. Trust me. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. For, this is Anytime. delicious. Anytime. It's all made from the bottom. I'm going to wrap it up, too. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's the only time we have a today's show. <laughs> I would like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you for tuning in and checking it all out. I wish you could taste this. You can catch a re cablecast of tonight at 5 and 10 p.m. or watch any time on the web at thebronxnet.org. Or you can tune in Wednesday for an all-new episode of the host, Taryn Jaime. We're always here at Bronxnet. Have a great and enjoyable day. And always remember that's what you are as God's gift to you and what you make of yourself as your gift to God. So choose your choice. I got your choice, control the choose. I'm Dr. Bob Lee. I'll see you on the radio tonight on 107.5 WBS. Love you all. Peace. Thank you. we